Welcome to Kids Skills. In this presentation, I will familiarize you with Kids Skills, the solution oriented approach to solving children's problems. Kids Skills has been developed by myself and my colleague Tapani Ahola in close collaboration with Tuja Terava and Sirpa Birn, who work at Keula Daycare Center in Helsinki, teaching a group of children with special needs. Let's start our journey by asking Tuja and Sirpa how Kids Skills has influenced their work with children. The question is posed to them by Andrew Duggan, a child therapist who uses and teaches Kids Skills in England. Since you started using this Kids Skills approach here at Coella, how have you found it? Wonderful. <laughs> In what way? Wonderful. In what way? Um, it has been so, so. Um, uh, we are happy. We are. Um, we find the job easy now. Yeah. And um, there's a peaceful calmness, and everybody's um, um, happy for, for another one. Nobody says, meh, you cannot do it. Mm. Everybody says, oh, that's fine. And, and it's very easy to work with parents mm. now. These days, there are many refined methods of helping children who have problems. So, what is it that makes Kids Skills special? We will let Tapani answer this question. I will translate for him. Okay, Tapani. Yeah. Hi. Uh, there are a number of ways of uh, helping children solve their problems. What would you say is unique about the Kid Skills approach? What I think is unique about Kid Skills is that it succeeds in building a cooperative relationship with all those people who are involved in helping the child who has problems. Very often when adults discuss children's problems, they end up arguing about whose fault the problem is. That does not help the child to solve the problem. Kid skills avoids blaming by talking about skills rather than problems. The process of converting problems into skills and talking with children and their parents about skills to be learned rather than problem behaviors that the child needs to get rid of creates a cooperative relationship, in my view, what is unique about kids skills is that when you use this approach, people automatically begin to cooperate and support one another. Emil is six years old. He used to be withdrawn and avoided all contact with his peers. During his time in Keula, he has learned to play and socialize with other children. Let's hear what Emil's mother has to say about kids skills. What have you found uh, to be the most useful part of uh, using the Kids Skills approach? Uh, well, I particularly like the thought that that um, I haven't done anything wrong, or maybe I have, but they don't sort of blame me and tell me that I have, I am the one to blame that mm. I have done something wrong, mm. and uh, also the children they don't tell them that you can't do this mm. and uh, you but they tell you that uh, you you might sort of benefit of learning mm. this new thing and uh, mm. the approach is different okay. over the years when working with families and children we have found that children don't really like problems they much prefer learning skills fortunately children can get rid of most of their problems by learning a skill that will solve the problem. After all, learning skills is much more fun than getting rid of problems, particularly when it's done the way it's done in kids' skills. Let me now take you through the 15 stages of kids' skills. The first step in kids' skills is when adults talk about the child's problems in the absence of the child and decide what skill the child needs to learn in order to get rid of his problem. We call this process converting problems into skills. Let's say we have a child who is incapable of playing with other children. What skill does he need to learn in order not to have that problem? That's right. He needs to learn to play with other children. Another child wakes up every night and crawls into her parents' bed. 
what is the skill she needs to learn in order not to have that problem. Yes, she needs to learn to sleep in her own bed all night. Converting problems into skills is, however, not always that easy, but with a little practice you soon find that almost any problem can be seen as a signal that the child needs to learn or to become better at a specific skill. When adults have come to an agreement about what skill the child should learn, you approach the child and tell him what skill he is expected to learn. Fortunately, unlike teenagers, smaller children usually readily accept being told that they need to learn something. In the following clip you will see Andrew talking with Tom and his parents. Tom's problem is that he has the bad habit of lying or telling stories, or porky pies, as he himself calls his problem. Let's see Andrew agreeing with Tom what skill he should learn. Maybe if we were to look at this uh, idea of you telling the truth, or not telling porky pies, or not telling such long stories, maybe things might be a bit better for you. But first of all we've got to decide You've got to decide because your mum and your dad and your teacher think that this is a, a skill that we need to learn. You've got to decide whether you want to learn this skill or not. What do you think? Oh, you sure? Yeah. Wow. You seem very positive about that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Once there is an agreement with the child about the skill to be learned, you ask the child to give the skill a cool name. When the child gives a personalized name to his skill, it makes him more committed to learning it. The cool name also makes it easier for the child to talk with people about the skill he is learning. I remember one boy who was learning to get dressed quickly and all by himself. He named his skill the speed of light. Let's see what name Tom gives to his skill of telling the truth instead of telling porky pies. Now the fun bit, we want to give it a name, uh, kind of a, a cool name that, uh, that might help us remember what we're trying to tell the truth is too formal. What name shall we give it? Tell it to me. Tell it to me. Tell it to me skill. How about we have tell it to me? Me, that's, all. that's what you want. Yeah. That's going to be the name of your skill. Yeah. Tell it to me. <laughs> In order for children to want to learn a skill, they need to see that there are advantages or benefits in learning that skill. If you ask a child what benefits there are for him in learning a particular skill, he may not be able to answer you without some assistance from adults. For example, when Andrew asked Tom what advantages he saw in learning to speak the truth, Tom said that he would get a treat, by which he meant that he would be giving sweets. Do you think that if we were to help you learn the skill of not telling so many stories, perhaps, or not telling porky pies, or whatever, do you think that would be advantageous for you? Maybe. Anyway, what is what does advantageous mean? It means uh, if you stop telling the stories or stop lying, what's in it for you? <laughs> what benefits are there? Do you, do you understand that word? Benefits mean I get a treat. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. What do you get out of it? What do you get out of it? Getting the treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe treat like sweets? Yeah. As the question of benefits was discussed further, Tom gradually began to realize that there were in fact many more benefits, and not only for himself, but also for other people, of him learning to tell the truth. When children are learning new skills, they need a lot of positive feedback, encouragement and help from other people. In order to make sure there are people who can give them this recognition, you ask the child to name those people whom he will ask to become his supporters. The rule of thumb is 
that the more there are supporters, the easier it is for the child to learn his skill. Let's see Tom naming his supporters. So, what we need to do is to find out which people, adults, can help you learn this skill. So, which people do you think are going to support you in learning this talented skill? Can it, can it be like my friends? Well, it can be uh, family, friends, teachers, and other people. Let's start with family first. Mum, uh, dad, my sister, as well as my cat, because he can't speak down. Mum, dad, sister, Emma. What's your cat called? Stanley. Stanley? Yeah. Anybody else? Can you go to friends now? Can? His friends are going to help you with this uh, talent and skill. Let's see. Josh. Josh? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Jack. Jack? Yeah. And some people in the class. Matt and uh, Ashley. Yes. Matt and Ashley. Jack is. Jack's in his class. Matt, Ashley. Yep. Ethan. Got Josh, Jack, Matt, Ashley, and Ethan. Okay, let's go on to the teachers. Any teachers that you think might help you learn the talent? Miss Curtis and Miss Perry. <sighs> Miss Curtis. And who else? Miss Miss Perry. Miss Perry. And Miss Bennett. They're the three teachers that I like best. Wow. In addition to supporters. You ask the child to choose an animal, a power animal, that will help and encourage him as he is learning his skill. The power animal is a symbolic representation of the child's inner resources. Having their own power animal gives children strength to learn the skills they need to learn. I've seen on the walls outside some of the power animals that uh, the children use. What sort of power animals do they have that helps them learn the skill? Um, most of all, they are animals. Uh -huh. And they are what, whatever the child wants them to be. They can, they, uh, usually when the child comes to our, this, to Joutsenet, our group, uh, the first thing that he or she sees is the, that wall with the power animals. Mm -hmm. and they say, oh, what are these? And the other children say, oh, these are our power animals. I want a power animal too. Raffe is now seven years old. He was in Keula for two years before starting school last fall. When Raffe first came to Keula, his problem was that he did not allow anybody to come close to him. The mere proximity of another child was enough to put him into rage. With the help of kid skills, he learned the skill of letting other children come close to him and to touch him. Let's find out what was Raffa's power animal. Wolf. A wolf. What was its name? What did you call it? Is it wolf. Wolf. <laughs> wolf. Just a wolf. <laughs> and did you have a picture of the wolf or a drawing yes. of the wolf? A uh, picture. A picture. Uh. And so when things were difficult to you, did you think of the wolf or did you uh, hold something that uh, was uh, of the wolf? Uh, I think about it yeah about the power yeah mm. can i ask you why you chose a wolf why did you choose that as your power animal well it's nice you nice. like wolves uh, they're strong aren't they they're yeah and wild and wild a bit like you huh that's a good choice <laughs> yeah when the child has learned his skill you want to reward him in some way in kid skills, you do this by arranging a celebration in honor of the child having learned his skill. Children just love to plan for celebrations. So what you do is you plan the celebration early on in the process so that the child has something to look forward to. The expectation of the celebration adds to the child's motivation to learn the skill. Can I ask you which which parts of the kids' skills you like the best? The <laughs> The parties. The parties, the yeah. celebration? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what did you like about the celebration? Did you like the food? Uh, the, the food. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the people that were there celebrating with you? Yeah. Yeah. 
one of the big things about using the approach is, is that you plan the celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you celebrate learning the skill when, when the child learns the skill? Uh, whatever the child says. Uh, always here at the Otsunet with all the children and all us adults. And the child may say what to, what is there to, to serve. Uh, is there some juice and, or cake or what, uh, what place shall it take? Is, is it in this room or, or, where, or outside or where? Do we have uh, face paintings or what else? The, the child may decide it. Okay. Mm. I also find it's very useful that, uh, that the children uh, are aware that we have faith that they're going to learn the skill because we're planning the celebration quite early on. And so it's, it's a way of uh, sending out a message to the child. That of course you are going to learn. Of course you're going to learn. Soon we will have your party. We're, we're going to have your party. We're going to plan for it. We're going to look at who's going to come and what food you're going to eat. And I have confidence, your parents have confidence, your teachers have confidence. Otherwise, why would we plan the party? And that somehow I think helps them because they, they have this vision of the party, which as you said they like very much, but also we're confident we're going to get that far. And they keep it in their mind. They, t they tend to repeat and they say, my party is going to be next week. When is my party That's going right. to be? They get very excited about yeah. that. So I find that uh, deciding on the celebration early on is very helpful. Yeah. In order for children to be motivated to learn a skill, it is not enough that they see that there are many benefits that will come from the fact that they learn the skill. In addition, the child needs to have faith that he will be able to learn the skill. Most of the time children of course have faith in their abilities to learn almost anything, but sometimes, particularly if they have tried many times and failed, they may have lost their faith in being able to learn. In order to make sure the child has faith in his ability to learn the skill, you invite the child to participate in a discussion where various people say why they are convinced that the child will be able to learn the skill. When the child hears what it is that makes his supporters convinced that he will learn, he too tends to become convinced that learning the skill is actually possible for him. I, I, in situations like that, I, I get the supporters to point out what other things has a child already learned? That's wonderful. What other skills are they doing? It could be riding a bike, it could be playing chess or playing on a PlayStation. All children have already learned many skills and many things. Puts them in the right mood. How did you do that? Yeah. And another thing is to point out that they are already, they have already learned a bit, you know, quite a few times they succeeded with this, you know, they, it's not totally new, they are already on the road, on the way. Now that the child is motivated to learn his skill, it is time to start practicing. In order to get an idea of how the child can practice, you talk with the child about how he will behave differently in this situation or that situation when he has learned the skill. You then ask him to show or demonstrate to you how mastering his skill will look like in practice. The showing of the skill brings about quite concrete ideas about how the child can practice the skill on a daily basis. In kids' kids, learning skills is a public affair. All the child supporters, as well as his peers, know what skill the child is learning. Only by making people aware of what skill the child is learning, we can bring together people who can support and encourage the child to learn the skill. In Keola, there is a bulletin board that shows what skill each child is currently learning. Another practical way of going public is to have the child show his workbook around and to tell people about his project. In order for children to learn new behaviors, they of course need to practice. Have you ever observed children learning to do somersaults? The way they practice is by showing. They want someone to look at them while they demonstrate how skilled they already are. Kids' skills builds on this natural way of learning. 
the child is asked to show others on a daily basis how good he is, while others generously show their admiration. How do you help the children practice the skill? Um, uh, we we ask them to show how you already can do it, and that happens weekly here in the morning circle. We ask the children to show uh, now show us how you can do it, and then they show and the other clap their hands and and then in the um, during the day. When, when the children go out, they can show how they already can dress up. And when, the, when we're eating, they can show how they can sit nicely and eat and mm. like that. Okay. In everyday situations. So this is, is this done every day? Mm, yes. You practice the skill every yes. day? Yes, okay. yes. Learning new skills tends to follow the rule of two steps forward and one step back. In order to prevent the child and the adults around him from becoming disappointed and discouraged by setbacks, you talk with the child in advance about how to handle such a situation. In Keula, the children are taught to think that setbacks are to be expected and they are advised to deal with them by consulting their power animal about how to get back on track. There are, of course, also many other creative ways in which children can deal with their setbacks. When the child has learned his skill, it is time to arrange the celebration. This event is not just a reward for the child, but also the opportunity for the child to thank all those people, including other children, who have helped him to learn his skill. There is almost something magical about a child thanking others for having learned a skill. In England one of the greatest benefits of, of this is that parents and teachers are not used to the child saying thank you for, for, for this. In fact they say that's one of the things that they would like the child to do more. So it is quite magical when the child goes up to one of the supporters, a teacher, thank you miss, thank you mister, thank you mum, thank you dad for this. It's a sign that they have that all the effort's been worthwhile and it's much more likely to want them to do it again. So when I have another child and we do the kids' skills with, they say, I like that because little Johnny or little Teresa or whatever, she said thank you, he said thank you. And that means a lot to us. So I think this part of the process is very important, not only for the child, but also for the supporters and, and the key adults who help the child learn the skills. It is said, that the best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else. In kids' skills, you reinforce the child's learning by deliberately arranging for the child to have opportunities to teach his newly learned skill to other children. When the child teaches the skill to someone else, it is a kind of confirmation to himself as well as to other people that he has now gained mastery of that skill. When the child has learned the skill, it is time for him to start learning the next skill. Moving on to learning the next skill is a further indication to the child, and to the environment as well, that the previous skill has been learned. Fortunately for all children, there are always new skills to learn or to become better at. Now let's repeat the steps of kids' skills. Here's how it goes. First you convert the child's problems into skills the child needs to learn. Then you talk with the child and agree with him what skill he will learn. You ask the child to give his skill a cool name and you discuss the benefits of learning the skill with the child. The child then invites a number of people to become his supporters and chooses himself a power animal that will help him in learning the skill. 
Before the child starts learning the skill, you plan with the child how to celebrate when he has learned the skill. You increase his faith in learning the skill by inviting people to tell him what it is that makes them convinced that he will be able to learn it. When you have asked the child to show you how he will behave when he has learned his skill, it is time to go public and to tell people about the skill the child is learning so he can get lots of support and encouragement from other people. The way the child actually practices the skill is that he shows or demonstrates to people on a daily basis how good he already is. In order for the child not to be discouraged by eventual setbacks, the child is coached to prepare for such instances. When it is considered that the child has learned the skill, it is time for adults to arrange the celebration and for the child to thank all those people, including other children, who have helped him to learn his skill. Finally, the child's learning is reinforced by offering the child opportunities to teach the skill to other children and by inviting the child to start learning another skill. I hope I was able to give you a good idea of what kid skills is all about and perhaps even succeeded in inspiring you to try this approach with your own children or the children you work with. Thank you for your attention.